All right, so today we're talking all about how to mix bass guitar. And we're going to cover a bunch of different examples and styles. So we're going to cover the regular four string, and we're also going to cover the five string and some harder rock genres. We're going to do a mellow fretless, and we're going to cover some slap bass. So at the end of this video, you should have some great tools to mix pretty much any bass guitar in any genre. So let's get right into it. So the classic way to mix a bass guitar is to split the original track into two tracks. So you'll duplicate it. And the idea here is, is that we get a chance to process the very low end of the bass separately from the rest of it. And this is fantastic for a couple reasons. Mainly because the low end of your mix needs to be super controlled and tight and punchy. And this also gives us the chance to add the bass amp only to the high channel. Typically you don't want a lot of distorted low end, it loses note definition and it just makes kind of a muddy low end in the mix. And we don't want that, so. The bass in this song here was recorded direct input, no amp, no effects. So here's the bass we're working with, just fingers playing on a four string here. And so what you'll do is you'll go ahead and duplicate the track and then one will become the low and one will become the high. And then we'll add a submix track and put both of them in there. All right, so now we have a submix track for the low and the high tracks. The low and higher than yellow there, and the submix tracks above it. So then what we're going to do is we're going to go into each track and we're going to isolate out the frequencies. I like to use Nova for this, and if you don't have Nova, this is a free dynamic EQ and I have a whole video on it. I'll leave a link for you in the description. So now, this is just the low channel. At this point, it's important to talk about the fundamentals of the bass. On a four string, you're talking from about 40 hertz is your lowest note, and on a five string, it's down to 30. And the highest fundamentals there are just under 400 hertz. So the idea here is to keep the low bass track just managing the fundamentals of the bass. So I like to roll my cutoff around 300 here because I know none of the actual notes being played in this tune, none of those fundamentals are going above 300. So I'm gonna dial my high pass in up here at 40 hertz. And I'm gonna bring my low pass down to about 300. There we go, and now that is only the low frequencies on the low bass channel there, covering all of the fundamentals. And this is where we're gonna control our low rumble and our punch. And this is gonna make mixing a lot easier. And this is the high track. We're gonna do the same thing, but now we're gonna high pass up to 300. So nothing below 300 is coming through here. But this is really the way to do it. Split these up into two different tracks and then we're gonna process them independently. So now we're ready to move on to amplifiers and compressors. So what you're gonna do is you're only gonna put an amplifier on the bass high track. That way we don't distort those low ends. And there's with our amp turned on. You can get this as crunchy as you like, depending on your genre. But yeah, just put your amp on the high end. And then back on the low track, since we want a really good consistent low end, we're gonna wanna compress the low end probably harder than the high end. Another great reason to have these tracks split up. If I give our low end a boost and clamp down with the threshold, that gold line dancing there, that means we're getting gain reduction. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn the ratio all the way up to about six to one. So we're compressing that low end nice and hard. And then you can even turn a limiter on the low channel. And now our low rumble is really steady and it's gonna always be there present in the mix. But yeah, so we have independent control over the low and the high channel, absolutely fantastic. And back on the high channel. If you wanted to go in at this point and do a subtractive EQ, this is, uh, would be a good time to do it if you needed to clean some of these up. Like, say I really don't need all of that 550 range. And then the mid-side EQing on the low is very important. So for example, if I take a parametric and I just set a low shelf to the side, and I pull all of that down, now our low channel is only operating in the mids. We've wiped out the sides, which is what you want. And if you're gonna do another boost here, just set your parametric to mids. But there you go, lows and high tracks split up. The amp is only on the highs. The lows have great control and they're only operating in the mids. It's a fantastic method. Well, now that we've flushed out that method real good for you, I wanna show you that it works across all genres. So let's keep moving. All right, let's get funky.
So this bass here is a nice contrast to the previous recording because this was not recorded direct. It was recorded with a nice microphone job on a really nice amp. It's a great sounding recording. But we're still going to use the same method to process it in the mix. Yeah, we do not want to go over processing this one because you don't want to go fixing something that ain't broke. Alright, so we did the same thing here. Let's jump into the low track and I'll show you. The first thing we did is high passed at 30, low passed at 300. And then we did engage some dynamic EQ. So we got the compression coming on here and we're clamping down fairly good so those lows stay nice and controlled. And then on the high track, same thing, we high passed at 300. And then I engaged the broadband threshold here to just clamp down a little bit on everything else. And in this case, I did not set a very fast attack time because it's a slap bass. I left the attack at 50 milliseconds and the release at 200. So where you see the gold line dancing, that's the loudest notes of the high slap bass being compressed just a little bit. But I left all the transients coming through because the original recording was pretty nice. If it wasn't, I would clamp down harder on those transients. So again, this is the submix track split between low and high. And this is the original. And the one we processed. So you can see we do have a little bit more control. We got a punchier low and we have a little more tame on the transients of the slap, but we didn't alter it that much because the original recording was pretty good. But if it wasn't, this would be a great way to clamp down on the high transients and really tame the low and boost it where you need it. So this method works great pretty much across any genre. So let's hear it again in the full mix and then we'll switch over to our processed. I like it much better, and in the context of the broader mix, it's going to be easier to mix with this submix track. And I didn't want to change the amp on this because I think it was recorded with a great amplifier. So there's our slap bass technique. Let's move on. All right, let's take a look at this five string here. Let's listen to the original dry recording of the five string. Yeah, so we got that nice low rumble that's all the way down to 30 hertz fundamental that we definitely want to preserve. And let's bring the drums in. All right, what we've done is we've done similar thing on the low that we did on the fretless. Uh, we low passed it lower this time, down to 30 hertz, and 300 was our cutoff again. And then on the high track, same thing, but I did accent the 2K range to get that little bit of crunch that we want out of it peeking through. So let's go ahead and listen to the processed one. All right, and compare that to the original. And back to our processed. Yeah, so we've really got the lows cutting through right where we want them, and we've cleaned up the high end a little bit. So that method works really good on the five string as well. Let's bring in all the instruments and listen to the original five string and the processed one that we just did. Alright, that was the original. Now let's listen to our processed version. Yeah, I like that way better. And then you could keep making further adjustments if you want. If you want to dip out a little more of the low muddiness and the low mids, around 300, you could do that. But yeah, again, even with the five strings, splitting it into two separate tracks works great. So let's move on. All right, so we're moving on to the fretless here. Let's take a listen to this dry recording. Yeah, 
Yeah, so this is my fretless and it gets a nice purring sound and I really like the way it cuts through the mix on its own, so I don't want to do too much to this thing, but I did still gain an advantage by splitting this into a low and a high. It worked really good. So let me turn that off and turn on the processed one. The lows are more compressed and controlled and the highs are a little less clicky and they're cutting through where we want. For the low, the first thing I did, because it was a little punchy, I used a very fast attack, pretty slow release compressor, and I just clamped down on the low. And I used a six to one ratio, and I dialed the threshold in, so I was only getting a couple dB of gain reduction, but that was actually the first thing in the effects chain on the low end. And then I went on to Nova, and I high passed at 30, low passed at 300, and I added a little more dynamic EQ compression onto the low end there. You can see that gold line dancing. That's gain reduction when the louder notes hit the threshold. So that's the low, and then on the high part of the fretless, Here's what Nova's doing. I'm high pass to 300, and I did a low pass as well with a really gentle 6 dB slope. And I also gave this a bit of a boost here at 1100 hertz, 3 dB, but I did compress it a little bit. So a little bit of dynamic EQ here on the high track. All right, so here's the full mix with the original dry fretless. I'm going to switch to our process fretless. And you can hear it's way more control. The lows are much more consistent and the highs have less of the clicky sound and the mid frequency is cutting through the mix where we want it. Yeah, so you can see that technique also works really well on a fretless. I'm, before we move on to the last example, I just want to emphasize that the mid-side EQ technique that we covered with the first bass, that needs to be done on every bass that you mix. You always want to make sure that the low end of the bass is only operating in the mid-channel. And if you want me to do a video on that where I dive deeper, just hit me up in the comments, but let's keep moving. All right, let's chillax a little. solo it on this bass. In my opinion, this is a great recording. Yeah, I like the amp. I like the overall balance. It's a little low heavy, and I do want to change the high mid where it's creeping through a little bit, take out a little of the clickiness, but this is a great example of if you like the original recording, don't mess with it. I didn't even bother splitting this into a low and a high because the original recording is great, and that's why I wanted to show this one to you. Don't do anything that you don't need to do. So where the lows are, where it was a little, little thick, I actually gave it just a hint of a boost, 0.3 dB, but I cramped down on the threshold quite a bit. So I'm compressing the lows. In the mid-range at 560 hertz, I ducked it out 5.5 dB and compressed it quite a bit there. And then I gave it the little boost where I like it. This is at 1172, and this is it soloed in on that frequency. So by giving it that little boost there and compressing it, I encouraged this frequency to punch through the mix a little more. And you also got to keep in mind that on Nova here, with the way the algorithms work, some of these moves look really heavy handed and dramatic, but they're not. Nova's super transparent and easy. But all in all, I did not change very much on this bass, just minor adjustments. All right, so we're going to go back to the full mix and I'm going to play you the original dry track with Nova bypassed and then I'll bring this dynamic EQ back on so you can hear the difference. Yeah, it's just a little smoother, a little more controlled. I don't need to add a bass amp to this one because I love the amp that this was recorded with. And in my opinion, I don't even need to compress it anymore. This isn't a super hard song, so I want some dynamic bounce. In a lot of hard rock genres and stuff, you want to compress that bass real hard, but not in a mix like this. I want to let this one breathe. Yeah. 
but that's a really important lesson to learn. As engineers, if it's working, don't go messing with it. Let it be. So there you go. Whenever you need to, you can split a bass into a low and high track and you can EQ them, compress them individually, add bass amps and change up that sound if you want. And as you can see, it works on a lot of genres and a lot of different styles. So that's your basic approach. And then from there, you tweak it as need be. So one thing that I did not talk about in this video is about side chaining. A lot of times you want to side chain your bass to your kick. And I have a whole video on that, so I'll leave that in the description below. But but when you're side chaining, you can just side chain to the kick on the low bass channel. So whether you're using a compressor or an EQ or both to do your side chaining, you can just do that on the low channel and that actually makes things a lot easier when they're split up. So between my two videos on cleaning up low end and this one, I think you got all the tools you need to mix pretty much any bass in any genre. So I hope you got a lot out of that. Let me know what you think in the comments and let me know if there's any other topics you want me to cover and I'll catch you on the next one.